Alan George here. Previously, we had made a procedural 2D checkerboard pattern. I want to extend that into three dimensions in this video. However, that requires that we actually have UVs that are three-dimensional, as opposed to the typical two-dimensional ones you're probably used to working with. Also, to make this a little more interesting, I want the 3D UVs to be in world space, so that when I move the object around, the UVs are going to update as well, and we're going to be able to see changes across the surface. That is, it's going to be sampling different parts of the texture as the object moves through space. Now I'm going to be working with the same project as the last video. If you'd like to, you can make your own project and your own script. I'm just going to be extending the checkerboard one that we had previously created. So let's go ahead and double click on checkerboard and open that up into Visual Studio. Now calculating our own 3D coordinates is actually really easy. We're just going to use the vertex values at each position and convert them over into world coordinates. So what we're going to need to do is first create a new method called calculate 3D UVW. Of course, we're saying UVW because we're dealing with three dimensions as opposed to just UVs, which are two dimensional. So let's go ahead and do void calculate 3D UVW. Now in this example, I'm going to move the object around and therefore, rather than write some code to actually make that happen, I just want to be able to work within the editor itself without pressing the play button. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and add the attribute execute in editor mode to this script so that I get to see the results inside of the actual editor. So coming on up here, so we already have a require component. Let's go ahead and do execute in editor mode. There we are. So if we come back over here now, we'll notice that everything's kind of paused and what we'll see is that the actual objects now have a texture assigned because it went ahead and ran that start method and generated it. However, we do have an issue with some errors over here and that's because of the way we're handling our material. When you're dealing in editor mode, you're not handling an instance of a material or an instance of a mesh. You're actually dealing with the shared material across all objects or the shared mesh itself across different instances. Therefore, we're going to make a small change to our script. Inside of here, instead of grabbing the mesh renderer dot material, we're actually going to do the dot shared material instead. Now that should get rid of that issue for us with no problems. We're gonna do the same thing when we grab our UVs. Instead of just grabbing the mesh, we're gonna be grabbing the shared mesh. Now, since we are grabbing the UVs, we of course are going to need to mess around with the mesh filter of our object. So why don't we go ahead and grab that and store it away? So let's do mesh filter, mesh filter. And down here, let's go mesh filter is equal to get component mesh filter. Great. And of course, we can always require our component again. Let's do another require component and we'll do type of and mesh filter. There we are. Come back over here. Let's clear this out really fast. And because the start method already got called for us when we did this, I'm actually gonna hit play once again, just to flood everything or refresh it more or less. And what we'll notice here is that we don't actually have any errors popping up. Everything's fine. So we were able to solve those issues. So scrolling on down, let's go to our calculate 3D UVW method. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is actually create a copy of all the different vertices that we're working with, because those vertices are going to become our UV coordinates. So we'll use a list of type vector three, and we're gonna call this new vertices, is gonna be equal to a new list of type vector three, and we're going to pass in our mesh filter dot shared mesh dot vertices. There we are. So that's gonna create a copy of the vertex data that we have and store it inside of new vertices. Next up, we're going to need to iterate over every single vertex we have. So we need a for loop for that. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than new vertices dot count i plus plus. Now we need to transform our new vertices and we do that by using the transform dot transform point method. So new vertices i is going to be equal to transform dot transform point new vertices i. Yes, you could have also just iterated through and added each element one after the other. So now that we have this new list of all the different UV coordinates, all we need to do is set our mesh equal to that. So let's go ahead and do our mesh filter dot mesh dot set UVs. And we're going to pass in our list of new vertices. It does ask for the channel. The channel we're working with is the first channel, which is zero. 
Now that we have this method that's going to set everything up for us, we need to know when to call it. Now, if you just want to do this once, you can call this inside of start and you'd be done with everything. However, like I said, I want to be able to grab the object and move it around and have it continually update its UV coordinates, and therefore being able to sample different parts of the 3D texture so we can see how, as we move around, we will get to see different parts of it. To do that, we're actually going to work with the update method and a special flag called transform.hasChanged. Now there's one thing about this flag, this Boolean value, and that is you have to manually reset it. So if you detect that a change has occurred, you need to set that change equal to false again. So inside of update, we're gonna do a check first. So if transform dot has changed, inside of that, we're going to calculate our 3D UVW coordinates, and then we're gonna do transform dot has changed is equal to false. If you do not do that line, you're just gonna to continue to have this get called over and over and over again for every frame of processing that you do. Okay, with that, we should be ready to move forward. So why don't we go back over here and what we'll do now is wait for it to finish. And we've got some issues here. Let's check out what that is. So it says instantiating mesh due to calling mesh filter dot mesh during the edit mode. This will leak meshes. Please use mesh filter dot shared mesh instead. Let's double click this really quick. And here's our issue. I had mistakenly used dot mesh. Let's use dot shared mesh. Very common to accidentally do that. Let's jump back over here now. I'm gonna hit clear. Looks like we're okay. Now what I can do is grab my objects and as you'll notice, as I move them around, it's resampling the space. Now remember, we had set our texture pattern to clamped. So as soon as we go outside of that zero to one area, you'll notice it's stretching those values off into infinity. So if we move it way out there, now we just deal with these uh, vertical lines or solid blocks, depending upon which section we're actually on. And the same thing, of course, now happens for our sphere as well as we move it through the different areas. And this is very interesting. Uh, although it's not very interesting with a two-dimensional texture. As you can see through one dimension, there's really no change happening. It would be nice for us to have checkerboards going in the opposite direction. And that actually is going to lead us into the next video where we're going to create our own 3D checkerboard texture. And as we move this object through it, we'll be sampling the different parts. So with that, I will see you all next time. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. So long and goodbye.